In the sky, Lord, in the sky, will the circle be unbroken by and by? Mother's Day, and I thought, that sounds fantastic. And she said, can you speak? And I said, sure. No, I'm just kidding. Um, no, I love the theme, but the first thing that came to my mind, which is why we had the giant bear, is because I thought of my granddaughter, okay? Because my, my granddaughter, Emmy, um, she is four years old, and she's autistic, and she loves to make things better okay but she doesn't like people to make things better on her so how we taught her how to make things better was we had a big bear and we had the band-aids and all the things that go with it and so she fell in love with her bear and she would make things better well then they make this beautiful book and if you've got children or you know somebody who has trouble going to the doctor or things like that because they don't understand what it is that they do or how they do it. This book, All Better Bear, comes with all these beautiful little band-aids, you know, these re-sticking band-aids. And you can come in and you can stick them all over the band-aids. takes you through different little scenarios and you put them on and it makes things all better. And I thought, well, that is the neatest thing. But the greatest thing is what we do in our families for each other, um, what we do in life and church together. So this morning, 
Instead of focusing on how we make bears make all things better, I wanna talk about how we as women make things better in our homes and then in our church, okay? Sound good? Yes. All right, so here we are. All right, so when we came out of the theme, the first verse that came to my mind was in Psalm uh, 147, verse 3, where it talks about where Jesus says, He heals the broken in heart and bindeth up their wounds. Wasn't a big stretch for that. I'm, I'm sure if some of you kind of that might have been one of those things. Is when you think all better, what's the first thing you think of? You think of your, you know, when your kids come in with their scraped knees and you're like, let mom make it better. Let me kiss it and make it all better. And so that's how Jesus works, okay? When he talks about how he bind, healeth the broken in heart and bindeth up their wounds. To heal, which I found interesting, means to stitch, okay? To stitch or a stitching or to make whole. And I know that every time Cameron or Kyle came up and um, had a bobo, mama would kiss it and make it all better and they made it whole. The problem I had later with that was that when I would be making a sandwich or getting a little snack and <clears throat> I would tear the corner of the cheese and the cheese packet as I was opening it up. My children were, no, it's not whole. I'm not eating that. So, uh, kind of went the wrong direction on that a little bit. But that's what heal makes. Heal means to make us whole. To bind means to wrap firmly. And I don't know that there's anything better than when you're hurting to be wrapped up tight and hugged on and made to feel that love, right? So. I want you to keep those things in mind. And a wound, okay? A wound is a hurt or an injury or a sorrow. And a lot of times we, we think of those physical bobos, especially when, when children are little or when we're growing up, we think of the things that we can see. But sometimes the hurts or the injuries or the sorrows are the things that, that we can't see. And the good news for that is that Jesus says he will heal those and bind, up, bind those and make those whole and better, just like we're encouraged to do today. So when I was reading that, I thought, well, that's, thank you, Susan, for that for on Tuesday night, because that was Old Testament and Psalms. And I thought, well, okay, where's the connection later? Well, the connection later I thought was interesting. Is the, the connection later is in Luke chapter 4, verses 18 and 19. And the interesting thing here is that Jesus has just been baptized. He's up in, in the mountains. He's separated himself for 40 days worth of temptation. Okay? The devil is after him hard. And here we are. The quote that he gives. Okay? I want you to, if you don't have it, I'm going to read it to you. I love, I love what he says. He says in Luke 4, verses 18 and 19, he says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, he hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. I thought, okay, there A, there's your connection, Old Testament to New Testament. Okay, Jesus is quoting from that. But what does that mean, and how does that work for us? Okay, so the first thing he says, he says, he, um, to preach the gospel to the poor. The most important thing we can give anybody is Jesus, okay? Because in the end, that's the only thing that matters. And if we don't do that in our homes, we don't do that in our, the, our areas of, of jobs, of life, we've missed the whole mark. The whole point of everything is to give them Jesus. And the saddest thing I could think of Especially listening to that song, with the, will the circle be unbroken? The only way we can assure that is if we give our families Jesus, okay? So that's the first thing, okay, to help make things better. Then it says he heals the broken heart. And I thought about that. Um, that's like from pimples to prom, right? <laughs> um, we, we go through a lot of, lot of, lot of different things. Brokenhearted hurts. Um, our children go through a lot of brokenhearted hurts. Our friends go through a lot of brokenhearted hurts. And I remember one time somebody said to me, Well, that's that. Yeah. There she's talking about a pimple on her nose. That is not the biggest thing in the world. Well, for her, it is. Okay? For her, it, it, it is at that time. 
for, for him. It's, I, I tried so hard to make the team and I didn't get it. Or we tried so hard for first place and we didn't get it. And while as a grown up, we're always going, they just don't understand. They don't have to pay the mortgage. They don't pay the car payments. They don't pay the bills. That's not important. Every piece of broken heartedness is important. It's important to God, first and foremost, which means it ought to be important to us and give us the opportunity to make it all better. Then it says, um, break the chains. And I thought about that. I thought, well, what, is, what does that mean? I can't, I can't break that for somebody. But what I can do is give them the, oppor- the push in that direction. Um, if, if my child is struggling being home alone, um, then I find things for them to do. If my ch- child is struggling or my friend is struggling without friends, I find opportunities for them to, to make friends because maybe um, my friend is struggling and alone, okay? Maybe for the first time in their life, they feel very alone. Well, then I find opportunities so they're not alone. That is how you, you break those chains. That's how you open those doors for them so that they can move through and be better. Then it talks about giving sight. And I thought, well, I can't give sight. Jesus was great about that. He could just spit on dirt and put it on eyes and you could see. I can't do that. But what I can do is I can give insight. We've all lived a lot of life, right? And I'm sure there's a lot of advice that we can give one another. And um, I'm going to share this real quick. Um, One of the sweetest ladies um, that I've ever known, she raised three boys. (laughs) And that was great because I needed all the help I could get because I was raising two. And she gave the best advice for me for my relationship with them. And that, and that was to always have the open door policy so that they knew that they could come home and they could tell me anything. And at that moment, mom was not going to react. I was going to listen, mm-hmm. smile, and say, we're going to pray about it. We'll talk about it, and I'll come back to you later, especially if it's something I couldn't celebrate at the time. And um, that worked. It, <laughs> what was funny, though, is that it worked super well when Pete was out of town because that was the time when my children felt the most encouraged to come sit on the couch and go, I need you to sit down, Mom. I got something I want to tell you. And that's when you, I put the smile on my face and I go, okay, sure. And we'd sit and we'd listen. And, and, but you know what? The things in their life, that they probably wouldn't have shared, they did. And that made it all worthwhile. And I thank her for that piece of advice because yes, <clears throat> did I get up off the couch a couple of times, go into the bedroom, scream into the pillow? Yes, I did. Did I feel like going into the cat kitchen and kicking cabinets? Yes, I did. But did I do that in front of my children? Absolutely not. So they would come home and do that. One of the other things that she mentioned was to make them always come kiss you goodnight. And so I did. And she said, there's a couple reasons for that. And I thought that was kind of interesting. She said, one, because A, they kiss their mama goodnight, and that's a memory you get to keep forever. But then she said, and then if they thought they would go out and do something stupid, if they kiss you goodnight right up here, you can smell just about anything and everything. (laughs) So I thought, well, there you go. So yes, give insight and advice. So what I want you to do for for me for right now, for just I want you to take just a couple of minutes because you're at a table with some amazing women who've lived lives who have probably have some great advice that they could offer okay so give yourself a second talk to your table about something that you might want to share okay so go ahead and do that right now real quick and then i'll bring y'all i will wrap y'all back in in just a minute <laughs> interrupting um okay so we just, y'all gave some good advice. I got to sit in and hear a few little things. Um, advice is, insight and advice is important. Now, um, the question is, when do I give it? Well, that's the hard part, isn't it? Because sometimes you don't want to give it because they didn't ask. Sometimes you want to intervene because you see them heading for disaster. So my only advice on that 
is ask God and let him let him lead you on that one. Um, okay, so diving back in. So we've, we've talked about how important the gospel is, how to heal the broken heart, break in the chains, and give insight, which is that, the insight. Well, then it talks about give, set at liberty them that are bruised. Sometimes wounds run deep, okay? They run real, real deep. And sometimes those are the wounds that we can't see, and those are some, the wounds that are going to take a lot to heal, okay? That's what that bruise is. A bruise is that is a, is a um, not to be all, all medically on you, but that's a deep wound where the blood has finally risen up to the surface, okay? And it's an indicator of some kind of damage underneath. Well, that's a lot of times in life. And sometimes we don't see our bruises. Sometimes, and sometimes we look around and we go, just like I'll walk through the house and go, where did that come from, okay? Um, that's kind of how life works. But as, as women, and um, as moms, making things better. That means looking at those bruises and realizing sometimes those run really, really deep. And the, the setting at liberty kind of has the idea of helping whoever we're working with to get rid of the bitterness that'll set in. Because sometimes the wounds that run deep, that take the longest to heal, are the ones where we sit back and we go, Man, why isn't this healing? Why isn't it better? And then that's where we are in the dangers of getting mad at God, getting mad at our friends and our families. And he doesn't want that. And as women, we shouldn't want that for each other or for our families. So work at recognizing the bruises and acknowledging the fact that they are, they're there. Okay? Um, I don't have to like how they got there. But I have to acknowledge that they're there. And then you have to figure out how to keep the bitterness from setting in. And then the last one, when you talked about the acceptable will of the Lord, right? The year of the Lord. That's the big picture. Okay? We talked about the beginning about teaching them the gospel because at the end of the day, you know, if we're not all in that unbroken circle, it doesn't matter. Okay? The big picture is always comes in that full circle. It's all about him. It's not about me. It's not about you. It's about what he wants for our families and our lives. So <clears throat> keeping an eye on the big picture where that concerns us, it's, it's easier to get to get rid of the little things. The things, you know, those gnats that get us in, in our families. Okay. And it, we want to make that mountain out of the molehill, as they say. Life's too short. Life's too short, and Jesus wouldn't want you to be there. It is the bigger picture. If, if me giving <clears throat> my two cents to my daughter-in-law is going to make me have a poor relationship with my daughter-in-law, is it really worth it? Or do I just let, let go and give it to God and let him handle it? So, again, so finding that way to keep the eye on the bigger picture made the comment as I was back there, that whenever you figured out how to get your children to come back home and stay and visit more often, let me know, because, you know, being, being separated in different areas from them, I'd love them for them to come home a little more often. Um, but, I, but that's the whole thing. You want them to want to come home, okay, instead of stay away. So keep that in that bigger picture. Um, and the reason we end on end sort of on that is the challenge that I want you to think about. Okay, was we making things all better, right? Why? Because <clears throat> I read a read a poem the other day. I'm gonna try to do it without crying. Because some of you some of you are there. I'm not there yet, and I'm <clears throat> I'm very grateful for it. But the poem that I, that I read was called The Day She Dies. I haven't lost my mom. I am very blessed to have my mom. My mom is my best friend. If you'd have told me that back when I was 15, even, even 18 and meeting my husband, I would have told you, mm -mm, that is never going to happen. I am, she and I are not going to work. 
but we work so well that here in a couple of weeks I'm taking a cross-country trip with my mom and dad so I, it's something I wouldn't trade anything for so again some of you are, you're in this boat and I'm grateful that I'm not but I know that there's going to be a day that I am and in that poem it talks about all of the things that you go through and you feel when that day happens all the all the negative things that come but then it flips it around and it talks about all of the positives because of the the memories that you have the things about her being there the things that are left behind and i got thinking about that and i thought about back to luke 4 18 and 19. if we focus on teaching our families about jesus and making sure that they're safe that's a lasting legacy. Cameron will never forget that he was in the car with me outside of a football practice the day he got saved. That's a blessing I'll never forget, but that's a legacy that I get to leave behind and he gets to share. Healing the brokenhearted, being there for every time that there's been a hurt. They don't forget that. I'm sure that there are times that you can think back and go, I needed that hug. I needed that moment. Okay? And those are the things that we share. Breaking those chains, getting us out of situations that we find ourselves in. The stories that they could tell. Brother Pete would tell you that his mom knew all the crazy stuff he was doing. And not one time did she ever address him about him. She but he would come home and he'd have to see her, her little bedroom door open, light on, sitting there reading her Bible or her up on the altar. And he just knew she was praying for him. Lasting legacy. That pieces, those pieces of advice, that insight that you pass down from generation to generation. Cameron was born in 2000. My grandfather died in 1998. But if you ask Cameron about Raymond J. Ivey, he could tell you anything you wanted to know. He would have, you'd have thought they were the bestest of friends. Why? Because we pass down that advice. We pass down those thoughts and feelings about him. And so it lasts. The freedom from the bitterness and the bruising, those are those times when your friends have stepped in and they go, let me help you through. I see that. I give that credence and credit. And like I said, the, the advice I shared was from a woman who gave that to me 16 years ago at my first ladies meeting. You never know when that advice is gonna come into play. And then again, the big picture. The big picture isn't just about today or celebrating this weekend or what a, what a, what a wonderful group of women we have here at Landmark and in this room. But it's bigger than that. It's all about the women who aren't in this room, who might need a church family like Landmark, who might need that, that family. Brother Pete and I are hours and hours. I am a, almost 12 hours away from my mom and dad but having friends and, and women who will come up alongside of you and act in that fashion means all the world. Um, again, you might be in the spot where you've lost your mom, but that doesn't mean that God doesn't have that other person, that other, I, I, don't, I don't call them mothers, even though they are, they're, I, they're the others who help raise up children. I've had a lot of others in my life who've raised me like their own. And um, take that opportunity. Um, we might have youth in our church who are great, have great families, but they might need that other, that one that they can call and say, hey, can you hear me? Can you talk to me? Are you there for me? So what I want to leave you with is that is make sure that you leave that lasting legacy. Make sure that you are doing everything that you can to get that big picture across, to give it, to give it your all, 
So that one day, if the Lord doesn't come back, when we sit around the room, or they sit around the room, they can go, you remember when Miss Angie said this? Can you, do you remember when Miss Judy did this? Miss Becky said that? Do you? That might make all the difference in the world to somebody one day. So as you finish out the rest of your at the morning, talk with each other. And then open it up and let God lead you to somebody who really might need you. So I'm going to close this in prayer, and then I hope you all enjoy the rest of your morning.